Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, we're making a choice today about the kind of future that we want. We can choose a future of more deficits and more debt piled on to our children, or we can continue having a weak economy where people in their prime working years can keep leaving the job market. Or we can choose a future where America's job creators, people who go to work every day, decide that they'll be better off starting or moving their business overseas. Or we can choose the future of more of the same. And it's not the wealthy who will suffer more of the same. It's the most vulnerable, low-income Americans trying to climb out of poverty. It's the middle class, families who find it harder and harder to keep up, to get ahead. People like my dad, a machine operator who's now retired as a United Steelworker. And it's our children and our grandchildren who will have to pay tomorrow for the mistakes that we make today. But we can instead choose a better future, Mr. Speaker, where the government learns to live within its means and move forward toward balanced budgets. A future where job-creating small businesses aren't punished by our tax code when they succeed. A future where we stop losing jobs and businesses to foreign countries with lower tax rates. When workers can finally get the pay raises they deserve, more money in their pockets, and where prosperity is widespread, not just concentrated on our coasts in a few large urban cities. We'll be voting soon on a budget that restores fiscal responsibility and paves the way for a world class tax code built for growth and a better future for our kids and our grandkids. Yesterday at the Joint Economic Committee, Mr. Speaker, we held a hearing on the decline in business startups, the engines of job growth and innovation in America, and the role tax reform could play in reversing this downward spiral. Among, uh, among other things, here's what we heard yesterday at the hearing. First, simplify the tax code. Entrepreneurs spend way too much time and way too much money complying with the tax code instead of focusing on growing their businesses. Second, lower the tax rates that our companies' employers pay. That's something that foreign governments around the world, both friends and foes, have already done to attract more jobs, more businesses. Third, let companies of all sizes write off the cost of their growth producing investments immediately. This is called expensing. Instead of deducting them slowly from the taxes over many years under very complicated depreciation rules. Fourth, stop punishing our businesses for investing overseas, profits bringing them back home to America. Move away from the system that double taxes American companies that do business overseas. These steps will boost economic growth, growth, growing markets will give entrepreneurs the confidence to risk starting a business, which many won't even do today, as we've seen more and more startups not making it to the starting line. More startups create more jobs, an average of six new jobs per startup. And more economic growth means continuing to spread that prosperity. I'm happy to report that these recommendations are a large part of our tax reform framework that's just recently been unveiled. Simplicity, lower tax rates, expensing, stop double taxing our American businesses that do business abroad, reward investment in America, and boost economic growth. We need a tax code that makes America the best place in the world to do business and grow your business and keep your business. Our job creators who are corporate taxpayers now face the highest tax rate in the developed world. While other countries aggressively lowered their tax rate, Mr. Speaker, to attract new businesses, we left our businesses standing still. Mr. Speaker, the tax reform framework would slash our corporate rate from the highest in the world at 35% to a competitive 20%. Instead of the worst, we get much better. In a global economy, that's just not a luxury, that's a necessity. Our tax reform framework will not only help American companies compete with foreign ones, but also bring capital back to America to invest and grow jobs here at home. And let's look at how the tax code is punishing our small businesses who pay individual taxes as pass-throughs, not just with complex, complex 
t taxes, but also high tax rates. When Main Street business owners went to sleep on December 31st of 2012, their highest tax rate was 35%. When they woke up the following year, in January of 2013, Mr. Speaker, their top rate spiked to 44.6% due to Obama administration policies. Now many on the other side of the aisle will say that most small businesses don't pay the top rate, but taxpayers who do pay the top rate, those small businesses in many cases are responsible for much of our economic activity and our employment as pass-through businesses. Every small business owner dreams of being successful and a high top rate punishes the very success that we want them to achieve in America. Adding to the federal rate, the tax rate, the local rate, many of these small businesses pay over 50% in taxes. The tax reform framework not only slashes rates for American employers, but our small businesses as well. The top rate for pastors will be 25%. Another feature of the tax reform framework, Mr. Speaker, would allow businesses of all size to deduct their business expenses, their investments, immediately through expensing. This would encourage companies to make the kind of investments like buying state-of-the-art equipment that would lead businesses to grow, create more jobs, pay better wages, higher economic growth, and, and the best part of all, larger paychecks for workers. Mr. Speaker, we have a choice to make. We can turn our backs on the most vulnerable Americans and doom them to more of the same, subpar growth, stagnant wages, more debt, less opportunity, a complex and outdated tax code that punishes job creation and investment in America. Or I hope we choose a better path forward, a better future for Americans, bigger paychecks, and it starts today with the passing of this budget. Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time.